producer spotlight with Mr. Instro. You can be a beat maker and not be a music producer. But when you're a music producer, you don't have to be a beat maker. Only on the element. I think I'm going to sing throughout the show. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I've decided is the vibe for today. It's just gone nice. quarter past one. I think I'm happy because uh, everybody is in the stew. Shout out to Mr. Instro. You're mm-hmm. going to be hearing him a whole lot now, bringing you the producer spotlight. Shout out to Just Chills handling the social media. And shout out to Temple Water handling the videography. Yep. Wednesday. And uh, we wouldn't be able to start the producer spotlight if I don't say, Mr. Instro is here. I am here. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm good. But apparently I'm happy I don't really know what caused it but this is where we are it's at. the last week of Feb yeah, I mean. yeah can I tell you why that matters because my know birthday's in matters. March guys yeah. I just wanted to put that out there 15 March is where it's at but mm. until we get there it's time for us to get into the producer's spotlight I'm going to do a very quick intro yes. and then uh, Mr. Please Instro go is going to come through and let us know why this particular producer matters mm-hmm. so with over two decades in hip hop under his belt the alchemist is widely recognized as one of the greatest producers of his generation yes initially was an aspiring rapper mm-hmm. I think that seems to be the general thing with a lot of yep. producers starting out wanting to rap and then later on really finding your pockets and being the dope producers that you are mm. so and he still raps by the way huh. he still raps but so. eventually focusing on Production. The production, yeah. right? Grew up in Beverly Hills in California and learned how to make beats by DJ Mugs. She's boy. Right. So credits go as far back as 1996. Yes. Including Fat Joe, Bishop Lamont, Rick Ross, Action Bronson, B.O.B., La Coca Nostra, Lil Wayne, and so much more. Yes. Why? I loved it. Why? Why? Uh, yo, that, that, was, that was a brilliant synopsis. Yes. I think I deserve some air horns. I'm actually going to give myself yeah, the air Yeah, give horns. yourself. Yes, because I earned it. <laughs> also for my singing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Back to the meat. Yes. The intro. What the we do in a while. Okay. So today we're covering um, the alchemist. And um, he's definitely one of those producers that... Um, aren't as popular um, just in the in the scheme of things when when you're talking about mainstream music Mm -hmm. a lot of people know his work but uh, a lot of people aren't really familiar with him as like a a a producer right Um, and uh, I I have to say that uh, I discovered Alchemist very late Really? Okay. Very, very late for who you are and what you do? Exactly. Or in comparison to when he first was out? In comparison to what I do. Right. It's, okay. It, it's quite embarrassing. But I have to <laughs> uh, I have to come clean. I have to tell you guys that this song that uh, just played now, uh, Worst Comes to Worst, Dilated Peoples, that's the first time I got introduced to Alchemist. Huh. 2001. Okay. Oh. And the guy had been working since 96. Super, super early. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, um, I, I, I wasn't always, <laughs> I wasn't always exposed to, um, you know, the kind of sound that was there. Right. And um, it was the perfect time, you know, around that time for me. I was like early high school, early high school really? time. Really? 2001? 2001, early high school. We, we were just starting high school. I... I know, I know, I know. I, I just want to put it out. I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I mean, you know, maturity doesn't like, you know. Doesn't depend always on, go with age. Yeah, it doesn't depend on age. So, yeah. like 2001. 2001, I, I, I was beginning to fall in love with, with hip hop and mm. what it stood for. And people like Alchemist were just coming out the scene and making some really, really dope stuff. I mean... Um, he's had like a, a, a good run um, ever since. Like he's one of the producers that are actually still here, that are yes. still making music now. And I'll tell you, it's it's interesting because um, he doesn't generally make music for like MTV, like those, right. you know, like commercial. Like, yeah, it is commercial, but it's not like we're trying to... 
get on TikTok and get everybody to to, <laughs> to dance challenge. that kind of thing yeah. you know um um which wouldn't actually be a bad idea but you know uh, he's 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 always been underground in inverted commas right. and I, i i love that about about him and his persona and it's it's particularly interesting because we don't have that here in SA right the people that have the same sort of like character who have the same sort of spirit right all have day jobs they they have, oh. they have other things that they're uh-huh. doing you know and um it's 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 a it's a beautiful thing for people like alchemist to you know have the sound that they have but still in, in a way uh you know ha- make some sort of a living from it and right. and um you know just come out the way they come out i think you're um, so right and i think especially when you mention um the fact that you know he's been here for so long, long as well and to still be in a position especially with all the different changes that have happened in life in general but also as far as hip hop is concerned yeah. it could have been very easy for him to kind of slip into the cracks and like you're saying end up having a different kind of day job yep. but for him to have been here for so long and been here throughout all these different developments in the sound in the space yep. in the culture and still be as relevant yeah. is pretty dope yeah, it is pretty dope i mean uh, another good thing about alchemist is the fact that he's he's very well respected yes. you know he's always been consistent he's worked with everybody and i say this every single week that if you have good relations that's true you always have work you know if you have good relationship with people you always have something to do you that know that is very true i think people really do underestimate the value of the relationships that you have and also conversation that you and i have had like offline and just yeah. chatting about our own things that for me in this current position having transitioned from being a print journalist to now being on air yep. the reason why even just early on when i started doing my show and um some people didn't know me was like yo how is she pulling these people mm. but it's because i had such good relationships with them or their management when i was still a print Coming. journalist that yeah. when i pick up the phone now it's not like yo what is this what's going on right. yeah and i mean obviously your work kind of precedes you you know what i mean True. like the kind the kind of work that you do uh, will definitely reach the right places if it's honest and if it touches people in one way or another that's very you true know? there's a saying that says that your reputation is going to get there before you do <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and um Alchemist, right? Yes, yes, and he's uh it, it, it's it's important to mention that he's a uh, DJ Muggs, the legendary West Coast DJ Muggs prodigy. Yes. Um he's pretty much the guy that kind of uh taught Alchemist how to, you know, find his way around the boards. Yes. Um it's also important to mention that he's not necessarily t- like just blaze for instance mm-hmm. just blaze is is technically trained right. as as you know as a producer and as an engineer um alchemist kind of uses his ears and that's has, incredible yeah he 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 relies a lot on on the power of his ears and and the technicality of of his ears um there's one interview where he actually says that Uh, he actually learned you know terms like quantize and and all of that much later oh, wow. in 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 his process of of making music and i i think many of us can can relate to that process because once you get that software on your computer <laughs> once you get that npc once you get that drum right. machine all you care about is pressing those different the things yeah i'm going to call them the things the things yeah <laughs> all you care about is pressing those buttons and uh somehow you find yourself creating some magic yeah. you know and he's always been the kind of guy to always consistently you know uh create that kind of magic um one uh, another interesting story about him is is yes. that um he tends to uh, play around his beats for for other producers right okay please guys it's so important to have relationships with your peers especially when you guys are producers because um technology software things like that drum kits those things are forever developing right. you know so it's so important to keep yourself informed to keep yourself in the know 
and with the help of your peers right i it's think it's so important i think we can speak about um the relationship with him and dj premier yes right yes so his his relationship with he once played him a beat and he was so scared of playing it for him because it had a clap apparently you know dj premier is very specific about right. like the kind of snare you use ah. so he was very nervous about doing that yeah. and then he, he finally played it for him and <laughs> dj premier is quoted saying i could actually rap to this you know oh, wow so always play your music to your peers you never know what you could learn you know sometimes you could listen to a beat and think it's not great right and then someone else hears it and goes yo this is actually dope that's true so that's something to learn that's something to to grasp like have relationships with with other guys that are going to help you to to move and to progress and to grow as a producer right yeah so there's there's this concept that i've always been super super interested in because mm-hmm. i definitely engage in the one and i don't necessarily engage in the other yes and i'm interested to know from a produ- from a producer and from our producer that we're looking at kind of the thinking around it and the concept behind it there there are times where you make beats mm-hmm. with the intention of having Anna Caesar yes. singing on it yes but then there are times where you make beats for the beat itself to just be, be beat. consumed as the beat yes let's talk about that man it's it's such a beautiful question because alchemist is one of the producers that like sample heavily mm. and sometimes when you when you sample a lot it kind of overpowers what an artist would do on oh, you know on on your music so it's very important to keep in mind what you're producing for mm-hmm. at that time you know in fact sometimes it just happens that you're making an instrumental yeah. and you you already hear the artist oh. so you leave some space you leave some space for it but generally it's important right it's 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 very important to uh know when a beat is full oh. um they describe it as like overcooking it okay yes right don't overcook beats you know unless if the whole point is for you to listen to the beat right do you understand don't go like learn the difference between a beat that needs an artist and a beat that's just for listening pleasure it's so important and and alchemist is one of the people that kind of like I, I, they find the sweet spot for that <laughs> you know when you listen to the first song we played yeah. book of rhymes that beat is perfect for rapping you know it's right. perfect you don't even have to have a subject right all you want to do is rap because it, it has so much space right you know and obviously when you listen to people like your dellas you'll find a lot of instrumental music where right. it's like actually this is fine as it is. This is dope just as it is. Just as it is. Right. Yeah. So key very very key learn how to make space if you're producing to make songs learn how to make space in your music. All right, that's super dope. So we've got 2 minutes to go before we hit half past 1 mm-hmm. and Akoli comes through with our quick news update. So I'm very interested because you know sometimes when you're listening to um artists for instance you can tell like if I came out and I I was rapping in a particular way you can mm. tell okay she's got influences from this person yes. she's got influences from this person now as somebody who is obviously super well versed in the production space mm-hmm. can you pick those kinds of things up from newer producers can you yes. go okay Aziza the producer definitely was influenced by, by Instro. Yes. So oh man. As far as Alchemist, who when you listen to can you hear that he's had some kind of influence yeah. on the way that they produce? There's so many people that I I personally can have like a a conversation with and they'll mention Alchemist as, you know, their top 5 producers, right. right? He's he's really like, you know, your I don't know, like your undiscovered them, mm-hmm. you know? Um but now these people like are the people of the moment right. you know Griselda if you listen to a lot of Griselda music you'll yes. understand i mean he is also like he has produced a lot of stuff for you know Westside Gun Conway everybody right, right? but 
that sound generally right. yeah if 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 we were to actually just dissect it we'll 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 get to learn that a lot of the influence comes from al- alchemist you right. know the the kind of sound that he has kind of moves freely in the in in the Criselda record space huh. yeah that is super 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 interesting all right so thank you so much mr instro i've actually learned quite a lot already as I guys always do. already guys already mr instro Hi. basically every week every week it's me and you Hi. every week every week it's me and uh, you. today i'm sad <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to say say a, a bit more about him but um please guys if you're looking for sample a sample heavy soulful and like you know beats that represent an era you know mm. alchemist is your guy that's the guy to look out for that's the guy to look out for yeah. it's just gone half past one Koli is here and on standby and ready to give us our quick news update because mr instro doesn't realize how dope the producer spotlight is and that's why it goes by so quickly so Koli is going to give us a quick 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 news update and then i'm going to let you know exactly what we're getting into just after that the producer spotlight with mr instro you can be a beat maker and not be a music producer but when you're a music producer you don't have to be a beat maker only on the element